Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to update the Cardano charts and the Polkadot charts. It's been quite some time since we've looked at those. We're going to look at our portfolio on SwiftX and see how we are tracking after that latest dump. And finally, we're going to take a big look at all of the bullish Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, skim through those headlines and piece it all together to see what is worthwhile and what isn't. So if you find value from the video today, let me know, hit that like button down below. We're going for 1500 likes. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you want to see more cryptocurrency content throughout this bull market. We are here to guide you along the way with the charts. That's our specialty on the channel. So hit that like button down below, bell notification icon. Let's dive into the video. Market cap is sitting steady, 1.5 trillion. Bitcoin still under the trillion mark getting closer again, Ethereum 185 billion market cap. And the two that we're concerned with today are Cardano at 32 billion and Polkadot at 30 and a half billion. Litecoin has been a coin that we've talked about a lot on the channel and there has been a lot of requests for it. So I'll include that again, plus Chainlink. So these are two big cryptos, which I think have got a lot of potential. You know that we use Litecoin as a flipper and Chainlink I like as a long-term potential. So like we want to flip for more Bitcoin and Ethereum. Today, let's focus our attention on Cardano and Polkadot on the charts. So let's have a look at our fear and greed index. We know we check this out every day. We want to see what the market's feeling. Now the market's feeling a little less greedy than it did this time last week, especially after getting corrected on uh, that Monday and Tuesday dump. We're at 79, so it's still in the extreme greed section. Last month we were just at greed because we were coming out of this uh, this big lull that we had, that big dip that we had in January. So that, that bottomed out at around the 22nd and we're now a couple of days past that. So we're sitting at around, well this was 55 about a month ago and now we're sitting at 79. So people aren't as fearful as they were in the previous dump, maybe because the dump is still fresh in their mind. And if we break these lows, at the 44,000 level, 45,000 level, then maybe we'll see the fear just step into the market a little bit more. But that still looks like a fantastic support level. As long as we hold above those highs, even if we dip a little below them into the 30s, I think we're good. Let's have a look at the first piece of news, Bitcoin. Novogratz Galaxy reaches 1.2 billion in assets under management. That's all we really need to know from this. Every big company, every big hedge fund asset manager, they're all increasing at the moment. As we can see with the next bit of news, Bitcoin's second North American ETF just started a price war. So now Canada has a, another one here. Evolve Fund Group in Canada lowered the price on its Bitcoin ETF ticker EBIT 0.75. So it's 0.75 of a percent down from 1%. So it's a lot less for them to hold the Bitcoin in the ETF. So this is starting a price war in Canada. It looks like a lot of people are stepping up to want to purchase Bitcoin in an ETF. Next bit of news is Bitcoin gains as bulls buying help soothe nervous investors. Essentially, we've got a lot of other bigger companies buying Bitcoin up. Maybe this has just put a pause in the dump. Maybe it's going to push us up even higher. I think they were just looking for an opportunity to buy into these dips. And uh, we can see here there was MicroStrategy and Square. They've picked up a lot more cryptocurrency. Square's purchased another 170 million. Well, they say that they are looking to purchase it and said that it had purchased it. Sometimes they say that they're going to do it and we're just not sure whether they have done it already or they've done or they've bought all of it. Whereas for MicroStrategy, it said it has paid an average of call it 53,000 for their 20,000 BTC. So issuing 1.05 billion in convertible bonds. So they've managed to collect that money, get that money together and buy 20,000 Bitcoin. So this is important to know because there are a lot of new companies buying Bitcoin and it's going to uh, make sense in another couple of pieces of news. Now you might not trade Bancor, but just keep this in the back of your mind. It's a quick section. Lawsuit against crypto project Bancor dismissed in New York. Keep this in mind when people start talking about, well, who could be the next cryptocurrency that gets destroyed by the SEC? In this case, this one was thrown out. Wherever the current business location of Bancor is, New York is not a reasonable and convenient place to conduct this litigation. This is what the district judge said. So it's, it's kind of nonsense in this case. If they were based in the US, maybe, but not every cryptocurrency is going to be 
uh, slammed down by the SEC. But that's kind of what the, the XRP guys want you to think, or at least the psycho army. Moving on, Canada Bank launches fiat-backed digital currency in claimed world first. Now I'm bringing this one up after talking a little smack on Ripple. These guys are looking, Canada Bank launches fiat-backed digital currency. Are they using Ripple? No. For the launch, Versa Bank partnered with Stable Corp, a joint venture between crypto asset manager 3IQ and blockchain development firm Mavennet, both also Canadian or Canada-based. Now, if Ripple had any part in this, I'm sure they would be putting it into this news article. I don't think Ripple has, or yeah, obviously it's Ripple, they don't have any part with Stable Corp, Versa Bank, uh, Asset Manager 3IQ, Blockchain Development, Mavennet. People are setting up their own uh, digital backed or fiat backed digital currencies. So yes, Ripple XRP is the token between uh, banks or that, that you can use to make transfers so you don't need to have it fiat backed but it doesn't look like in this case a Canadian bank is interested in something like that they'd rather go with something that they can develop and have it as a fiat backed digital currency so they can make the transfers with something that is of value and I say that obviously you know fiat it is what it is moving on we have MicroStrategy bets another 1 billion so this is the article here we just looked at that and they purchased close to 20,000 this is just a little more detail and that was at about $1.05 billion that we just saw on that last one. So $1.026 billion on Wednesday. So that was when we dropped. <laughs> but if we increase, obviously, that number is going to be higher. Now, ARK Invest might not be such a big name in the cryptocurrency space, but for traditional markets, especially the Tesla fanboys, Kathy is like a god for them. So she says here, I do believe if rates were to take a sharp turn up, we would see a valuation reset and our portfolios would be prime candidates for that valuation reset. I bring this up because we are so stuck in the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but we're still heavily correlated to those markets as much as people believe it's not. When those markets dip, then Bitcoin tends to have a dip as well. When it's very serious, take 2020, COVID crash, March of 2020, all the markets dipped. So if we get a massive valuation reset, uh, it's something like S&P drops pretty heavily because the Fed begins to increase its interest rates, that will have an effect on Bitcoin. And we can also see that Bitcoin has an, uh, there's an effect on Bitcoin when the US dollar increases in value. When the US dollar drops in value, Bitcoin uh, it tends to go up. And I'm talking about the DXY chart, which we've looked at previously. So Kathy talks about here, uh, one of the things that I found interesting over the last 20 years is that the S&P's price to earnings ratio tends to peak out at 20 to 25 times the range. Don't worry about this, this if it doesn't make too much sense. We just want to take note of what Kathy's saying and just having a look at, a, at this range, 20 to 25 times earnings of the S&P. If we start to get a little bit close to that mark, maybe we could be primed for a bit of a dump on the S&P. Now, if that dumps pretty heavily, and this is research over the last 20 years, so it's not just the last 20 days, we look at that, then we could and should take notice of it for our Bitcoin charts. And we don't have to run around screaming our heads off, figuring out why is Bitcoin dumping when we could figure out, let's go have a look at the S&P or the NASDAQ, like I talked about in yesterday's video. Moving on, Bitfinex Tether, Another quick one, need to know this information because Tether FUD comes up all of the time, especially at market peaks. You get to those peaks and you wonder, where can I put my profits? There's FUD on Tether. What do you do? You don't know and you leave it in crypto and it dumps. So Bitfinex and Tether have been banned from operating in New York. Who cares? Must pay an $18 million fine. Who cares? Tether's worth $35 billion. <laughs> So what's 18 million to them? Maybe Tether printed 18 and a half million, bought Bitcoin up, dumped the Bitcoin for some fiat and paid off the fine. Who knows? It could just be another story to go along with the F2 pool story about Bitcoin dumping. So anyway, I think this almost sums up the entire USDT FUD altogether. So we do have another place to uh, sell out of our cryptocurrencies and take some profits. Obviously, the other options are USDC, Binance USD and Gemini USD with plenty of others hot on their heels. All right, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is trading at a discount. Should investors worry? 
So Grayscale, we know, buys a hell of a lot of Bitcoin. They have $32 billion worth in their trust. Some analysts are concerned that this could depress the price of Bitcoin. Basically, if it's trading at a discount, maybe people aren't buying so much. And then maybe if this trend continues, this uh, will worry, this worries is that Grayscale might stop buying up Bitcoin. So that's the worry that they might stop buying Bitcoin. But who cares when we have Square buying another 170 million, purchasing 3,300. We have uh, another, the Canadian ETF, which we talked about earlier, continuing to buy more, another 2,200. Sure, it's not at the same levels that Grayscale's buying at. At one stage, they were looking to buy up all of the Bitcoin every day, around 900. But we know that that has slowed. And with all of these new companies coming in to buy up Bitcoin, it just goes to show that we probably have a lot of players coming into the market that could support Grayscale not buying anymore. So I think this is just balancing the markets out and when we start to take off again, things could really heat up if Grayscale is buying plus the ETFs, plus the companies. So we've got a lot, a lot going on here. Bitcoin futures as well, seeing 180 billion in trading volume. This is huge, 180 billion in trading volume. All right, I know I'm repeating myself a few times, but look, look in here, Binance leading the leading the charge, 3 billion in uh, Bitcoin futures, open interest. The the point with this is futures have to be bought at a later date or at the contract expiry. So if people hold them to that expiry, then the Bitcoin has to be bought and then delivered. So that's why futures are a great thing, not just a replicated product like Grayscale, with their GBTC, where they can basically just create their own form of Bitcoin on Grayscale. We do know that they buy the Bitcoin as well, but they don't have to do it at exactly the same time. So they can create it, trade it at a discount, and it's just more Bitcoin in circulation to a degree. But futures, the real deal, once the contract expires. Last thing I've got here, 1 million Bitcoin could underpin crypto loans within three years. So this whole space continues to expand. And if we don't see a continued bull market this year, which I honestly believe we do, but worst case scenarios as we look at it as investors and traders, then it's still coming at some point in the future. I think we've got enough backing now. It's really cracking into that mainstream. So Bitcoin, tons of great news. Even if we get a further dip from here, long term still looks like a fantastic outlook. We haven't seen any strong, any major fundamentals crack. Let's turn our attention to the charts and have an update of Cardano. All right, so with Cardano, we're looking at the US dollar value. We're still sitting above our support levels that we've set a while ago. So this is still fantastic news. Let's move it across to the weekly chart. Still way up here, this is great. We need to be staying above this 80 to 90 cent level. I know a lot of people love the dollar because it's a psychological level, but really around that 80 to 90 cent level is where we want because this is where the action took place 2017, 2018 before the dump. So provided we stay up here, I think we're solid with ADA USD. ADA ETH, another big one which we've looked at a couple of days ago and we continue to hold above the uh, the resistance which is the first time since 2018 since we've been above this level this is huge news for ada versus ethereum take that into account as well this is this is great uh cardano versus btc again holding above our resistance so we've looked at this on every other video with cardano this is our major area to understand i was talking with my trading group the other night and uh, if you want to know more about that, there's a link down in the description, the Investor Accelerator. If you want, want to learn how to trade and invest, check that group out. Uh, we go through all of this in crypto and also property cycles. A great group. What we're talking about here, there was a comment made, uh, anyone can get into the market. You just have to buy something, but only the professionals know when to get out. And that's what I want to focus on. That's what I do focus on on the channel is knowing when to get out. We don't need to get out at this peak provided we make a good chunk of gains through the middle. That's all this is about. This is a confirmation that uh, Cardano is looking to break out against Bitcoin even further. And like we just saw with Ethereum. So provided we don't head back under and start another accumulation in here and we stay above and have another reaccumulation or take off, this is great news. It's, it is a confirming factor above these triple tops. So that's huge news. So all I can say is it's great news for Cardano. Looking at Cardano uh, Polkadot, 
it's still holding above our, our level here that we had set. So it dips down, dips above. It's, it's a little bit more tricky with Cardano versus ADA because they are both vying for that top spot of, of Ethereum. So between the two, so far, it's just an up and down battle. So far, they're looking both pretty good. So if you needed to take a bet on both, probably not going to be too wrong at this stage. Last thing I want to have a look at is Cardano versus uh, Binance. And it did have that big dump when Binance took off. But for now, it's looking pretty good. Huge volume on the pickup. We're sitting above our uh, support level that we really want. So this was resistance back here. Now sitting above it. Need to wait for the week to close. We've got about four days to go, which is no problems. Looking positive, especially after a nice solid dump to wash out the weak hands under here. No problems there whatsoever. Let's take a quick look at DOT as well. So for Cardano, I'll, before I jump across to DOT, Cardano looks like it has confirmed itself against Ethereum and Bitcoin. US dollar is holding up steady. Against uh, Binance, it looks like a great time as well. If you had Binance profits and you wanted to flip it into something else of a lower market cap, Cardano looks pretty solid. Looks very solid on all fronts. DOT is the only one that is still... They're both between uh, seesaw. They're seesawing between each other, which is why I'm going to have a look at DOT as well. DOT Bitcoin, it is breaking out of its highs. It's sitting above it. We have consolidation forming, some sort of reaccumulation above the breakout. So another good level. We, we don't want to see it come back down under here underneath this 50,000 level. So let's just keep an eye on this and we'll keep revisiting it in other videos. So another confirming factor, if we're looking to buy, buy on breakouts. That's driving with the momentum. First breakout was back here at around 34, 35,000 Satoshis. Could get in here, which was much higher risk, but better returns, of course. Still looking good. DOT and Ethereum, extending ranges. These ranges are extending. Look at this extension through here, fantastic. So we're looking at this range, that's 100%. Then we're looking at this range here, which is broken 125%. When you have extending, extension on the of the ranges, that is a strong sign for the market. So again, DOT and Ethereum also looking strong. And this is why it's hard to toss up between Polkadot and Cardano. You can either pick one and go heavy on it or spread your risk across both. Take the new coin and the old coin. See what happens from there. Dot USDT also looking okay. Probably a little weaker in my opinion compared to Cardano. However, we don't have that previous data from the last cycle to tell us maybe Dot could have went higher and now it's making its way back. But the volume continues to stay strong, which uh, makes me hopeful that we're going to see more upside to uh, dot usdt or dot usd so that's looking strong as well let's have a look at our portfolio in swiftx and how we buy polka dot and cardano let's add polka dot to the portfolio so far we've got cardano ethereum bitcoin band and reef nice gamble here on reef so we're going to add polka dot as well now for the international guys i've got a link to binance down below you can get polka dot you can get the rest of these on binance except for Reef, from my understanding, they might get it soon. For the Aussies, SwiftX, if you don't have an account already, there is a link down below in the description. Use that one. Don't be touching things in the comment sections from other people who are not me. Uh, there's a lot of scammers going on. So SwiftX, looking good. Let's trade and buy ourselves some DOT. Simple as that. To the left-hand side, trade, buy. Search for our coin down here or in the search area. Just hit DOT, polka dot. 42 bucks. So we've come down a little bit, which is nice. We can see that if we hit chart and let that load. This is on a f one day. So we've at least come down from the highs of around 53 Aussie dollars. So sorry for the internationals not using USD on here. And we've spiked down at around $34, currently at 42. So we go back to buy. We've got a little left in the tank. We're at $1,800. I'm going to buy a thousand dollars worth of dot which gives us about 23.5 instant buy gives us there we go confirm rate of 42 dollars and we have our dot and about 880 bucks left for our final purchase to put into our portfolio we started with around 13,000 aussie dollars and we're currently at 13,200 aussie dollars started this at around the peak as well so keep that in mind we are looking to increase this by 10x by the end of the year. So the game is on. We want to get to 130,000 Aussie dollars in our account 
uh, right over here. So, so far we've got ADA, BAND, ETH, DOT, BTC, Reef, and a little Aussie dollars left to pick up anything else should we dump again. So keep that in the bag and we'll push forward to get our 10X by the end of the year. Thanks for joining me on another video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button down below. Let's get the video to 1500 likes. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you can see these videos when they come up nice and fresh. Join me on Instagram, daily Q&A, and a look at my retirement fund portfolio. It was around 210,000 yesterday. We'll see what it's at today. Go across to Instagram, check that out. I'll see you over there for Q&A. If you're looking for a wallet, a crypto wallet to move some of your gains into to use on a regular basis, check out crypto.com. Link is down below as well. That's the app that I use to do my daily transactions with cryptocurrency. You can also get a debit card for that too. So that's the nice easy thing, which is why I use it for the daily stuff. So crypto.com down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.